Here's another way of formatting strings uh, using a function called string.format. In this case, I have a VB application where I have a list box, and I want the data presented in this box within five columns. And so I'm, I'm adding data by last name, first name, the number of at bats for a baseball player, their hits, and then having it calculate the average and displaying all that on one line in a text box. I'm sorry, in a list box. So let me add another player. I'm going to click the Add Player, and I've got this set up so it automatically alphabetizes as it adds them in. So you can see that all my numbers on the at bat column, which is numeric, are right aligned, as are the hits, and are as are the average. Let me add one more player in. Let's take a look at the code. So I have a string, which is a class level variable known as SF. And let's take a look at what that string consists of. It has pairs of numbers inside curly brackets. The first pair is the, is the first column. And so the zero tells me that's the first column. And we start counting indexes with zero. So it's the first column and it's 14 characters wide. And the minus sign tells me that it is left aligned. Here is the second column. Column number one, it's 10 characters wide. It's left aligned, minus 10. My third column is eight characters wide, but it is right aligned, as is the fourth column, column number three. It's right aligned, eight characters. And my last column, which is index four, my fifth column, is seven characters wide, and it is right aligned. Now I have a form load procedure here that's handling the, when the form is loading. And I'm setting a label named ldlheader.txt. That's going to be above my list box. Setting that text using string format. Inside the parentheses, my first object is the format string. Now I could have literally used this string in that location, such as that. I prefer to simply use a variable, especially if I'm going to use it more than once, because I'm going to use it again in, when we're adding our players. So that's the, the string format that's going to use. And then each item after that, separated by commas, is what I want in the first column. So I want the little string last name, second column, little string first name, third column, little string AB, then a little string of H, and a little string of ABG. And then when I click the Add Player button, we're going to execute this code. And I have three variables, fn for first name, ln for last name, player as string. I have ab, h, and space lock as integer variables, and abg as a single variable. And then I have an if structure, actually an if-else structure. And what I'm looking for simply is making sure that the users entered something in each of those three fields where they're entering the data to add a player to our list box. So I'm going to make sure that there's something in each field. So if txt player.txt does not equal quote quote, it's not empty, and txt ab.txt is not empty, and txt h.txt is not empty. So that's the player, the app bat, and the hit field. I'm going to take the txt player.txt, I'm going to trim it and add it to, or put it into my player variable. Then I'm going to find the location of the space and use that to extract the first name and the last name from that player variable using the substring method. So fn is first name, ln is last name. I'm going to get the text that's in those two text boxes for at bats and hits and convert those to integers, placing them in the variables a, b, and h respectively. I'm going to calculate my average variable by hits divided by a, b. And then here's where we're going to add the player into our list box. We can use that string format. So I've got lst stats.items.add. And what I'm adding is a string.format. I'm using that sf as my string format again, which is my class level variable. I'm going to put in the first column the value of ln, second column the value of fn, third column the value of ab. Fourth column, the value 
of H. And then in my fifth column, I'm going to put the value of AVG, but I'm going to convert it to a string, and I specified a literal string value here of 0 .000. I didn't want to use N3 because I didn't want a leading zero uh, to the left of the, at the decimal point. So this will remove that. It just gives me a decimal point and the three decimal values. Then I'm clearing my three text boxes and setting the focus back to the next text box. If any of those text boxes were empty, we'll have a message box come up and say one or more of the fields is blank and the title will be missing data. So that's how we can use string.format to place values into a column. Now the other key on all this, of course, is my list box as well as my label, my header label. Those should all have the font set to a monospace font such as Courier New. And I use Courier New 9 point. Let's take a look at the same project in C Sharp. Interface exactly the same, it works exactly the same. Let's take a look at the code. I do this one slightly differently. Rather than having a class level variable, I just put my variable in each of my procedures. So here's our form load. I've got that same SF string variable specifying my five different columns and the width of each one. And again, the minus sign in front of the width means it's going to be left aligned. And then I'm setting the text of my LBL header label to string.format using the SF string. I'm going to place last name, first name, A, B, H, and A, B, G in those five columns respectively in that label text. When the user clicks the button to add a player, we're going to use that same string variable. And I have a string variables for FN, LN, and player. Integer variables for A, B, H, and space lock. Space lock will help us parse out the name into first name and last name. And I'm going to calculate the average as a floating value. Here's my if structure. So again, I'm looking to make sure that the user entered something into each one of those text boxes. So we're using our double ampersands for complex Boolean operators, making sure that the text is not equal, quote, quote, on each of these three text fields. I'm going to get the value of the text of txt player, trim it, put it into our variable variable, find the space in that variable, and then extract from there using substring our first name and our last name. I'll get the text from our txt ab and txt h uh, text boxes, convert those to an integer, assign them to the variables a, b, and h. I'm going to calculate h divided by a, b, and I I cast H as a floating value because these are both integers. I don't want integer division in C-sharp. I want it to be a decimal value or a floating value. And that will force it to do that. Once I've got those calculated, I can then add the value to my, to my list box using string.format again. So inside string.format, the format we're going to use is the contents of the string SF. That gives us our five columns. Column number one, I'm going to put in the last name, or LN. FN in the second column, which is the first name. The value of AB, the value of H, and the value of AB, ABG. And here I'm specifying ABG as a string with a literal format of 0 .000 to eliminate a leading zero to the left of the uh, decimal point. And then I simply clear the text boxes and set the focus to TXT player. If any of those text boxes were empty, we're going to show a message box saying that there's missing data. Let me just test this in C Sharp so you can see this run. And again, I have the sorted property list box set to true, so when I add a player, it automatically sorts alphabetically on the last name.
We can see here how the columns are nicely aligned. Last name and first name on the left, AB, H, and average on the right.